brought me to my knees at the time and still just overwhelms me today. This poor, this little guy had no fear at all. Seven years old. In the middle of Appalachia. That was all it took. That was all it took for me. Growing up part Jewish and part Catholic. How's that? How's that? I went around half the time hating myself. <laughs> Half the time. <laughs> and this kid, this little kid, gave me the lesson of my life. I wasn't asking for that. I just wanted to see these kids be able to eat. We fight over the most petty things. There's a guy that wrote a book, his name is Lou White. And I really would like to meet the guy, but he's got this claim that the only way you can spell Yeshua's name is in Paleo-Hebrew, which was a very, very form of Old Hebrew. And I wrote to him and I said, you mean to tell me that if people didn't see it this way, then all these people have perished and weren't saved? And he said, I didn't say it. I said, oh, yes, you did. Whether you want to believe it or not, yes, you did. Because I got a word from the Lord. I said, you need to stop this now. I said, because eternity is forever, buddy. It's not, it's not, you know, you do, there's one word, and that's it. Nothing else needs to be added to it. All these things you see added to it, you know. And I'm going to pick on some guys here, like Rick Joyner, and, uh, you know, talking about your, no, nothing about your life. He's it. He is the light. The truth and the hope. Yes. And unless you believe in that, you're wasting your time. But they're all looking for some sort of earthly wisdom. And it doesn't occur. It doesn't occur. This chair is really rocking. Um, we need to give our life to Him. It's all he asked for. Like I said, it's the hardest and the easiest thing you'll ever do. To take that step over the line that says, I'm not going to be part of this earth anymore. I'm not going to be in the earth. I'm going to be of the earth. I'm going to be part of what, what creation was. I mean, I can imagine Adam and Eve, their, their uh, conversation after he bit that apple. Him saying to Eve, what did you do? Yeah. As the Lord said to him, how do you know you're naked? Now, I couldn't imagine walking around naked, but of course, if there's only two humans on earth, what difference does it make? And the problem is everybody thinks that this is a storybook now. It's not a storybook. Pray for my dad. My own dad believes that. Okay? He's an old Jew. He thinks, oh, I'll do what I can for other people, and it all gets tallied up in the end, and that's it, and I'll go where I go. No! No! My mother's mother was a Nazarene. My dad married a Christian, which was a no-no. My grandfather didn't speak to him for a year. <coughs> so our job is to carry forth what he said to us to pass it on in simple terms remember in grade school would someone hand you a note and say pass it on you know teachers I think pass it on <laughs> Poor teachers, they didn't stand a chance. You know, they were all jerks. I didn't know that until I became a teacher. I taught at a uh, Universal Technical Institute, is where they make where they teach mechanics, and I taught electronics. Boy, that was an education. That was 18 months of 
I mean, those kids, you couldn't just tell them something. You had to prove it. They wanted to know how and why. Thank God I went back to school and got my degree in uh, electrical engineering. Because they'd have twisted my head around sideways. <laughs> had I not known any better. You can't fool kids. You can try all you want, but you can't fool a little kid. Little kids are the ones that will say to you, Oh yeah? I mean, I mean, tell me about this Jesus. What can he do for me? And that's where you that's where you have to soften because you're not gonna you know, you, you can't shoot bullets at a rock. It ain't gonna do any good. But if that rock has cracks in it and you pour water over it, it's gonna seep in. And it's gonna nurse nurse whatever life might be in there. They've proven so many things that nobody in the world hears about. There were two guys from Los Angeles, uh, a detective and a um, market analyst, you know, for the stock market. And they went to Israel and they followed exactly the word. And they found that when they went to the Red Sea, that they came to a place and 50 feet down was a coral bridge that went across it. So a diver, they had divers go down. And when the divers went to the bottom of the coral bridge, guess what they found? Egyptian chariots. It happened. It happened. When they go to the, the Mirabah, where he tapped the rock, I think they thought, there was a million people there, and they thought like a little stream came out. No! It blew out a rock the size of a Volkswagen that landed a mile away. And billions of gallons of water poured out, so much so that you can see the eddy currents in the rock. Okay? These things really happen. Why did he send Israel into the wilderness? Because no army would go in the wilderness. They, they all died in there. So he sent them to a place they were safe. You know, when he came through, when they came through, and he knew he had to pass everything over to Joshua. Moses stood on a rock. There were two uh, rock, uh, two mountains, Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal. Mount Gerizim had trees and shrubs and everything on it. It would flourish. Mount Ebal was a bald rock, and he had he split the tribes and he spoke. To, the, to six tribes each. Mm -hmm. And he spoke, where he spoke, it was a natural amphitheater. To this day, you can hear people from a half mile away talking. He created the earth. He can do anything. Yes. Okay? And his prophet and his captain at the time was Moses. Nobody knows what Moses went through. I mean, in the book of Judah, it says... That not, that, that not even the bones of Moses were spared when the, the, Michael, the archangel Michael fought with or contended with Satan for those bones. So Satan didn't even get Moses' bones. And what do they find out today? The one way you can tell DNA? The bones. They... We are now moving backwards. We know so much about the body and health and everything, we're moving backwards. Because we're not trusting, we're, we're, we're messing with DNA. It started out with DNA of plants, and then they made another sheep, poor thing. Every animal has a soul, as in the fish. That's what it calls them in scripture. When he created them, he didn't say great animal. He said he created souls. You don't believe me? Come and visit me. I got a new dog that, well, man, you, if this boy don't have some soul, nobody does. He's a black lab crossed with a dachshund. Goofiest looking thing in the world. Okay? <laughs> but he will love you to death. He will absolutely love you to death. Augie. What? Augie. <laughs> <laughs> 
that was that was the name of my first dog. He was an Australian Shepherd. He was actually my uncle's dog, and he followed us all through the creek. My grand, my uncle used to say we were like Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn. My brother and I. We always had a straw hat on. And we never had shoes on, and usually had overalls on that were cut off. That's what's amazing to me now. When your jeans would wear out and get holes in the knees, you'd cut them off. Today, people pay $100 or more for a pair of wore-out jeans. I'm thinking to myself, what is wrong with you people? You need some new Levi's, them stiff ones where you got to walk stiff-legged for a couple of weeks. But it's, it's an upside-down world. It's crazy. They... Uh, You know, to this day, alcohol is legal. Alcohol is the most dangerous thing in the world. You want to see people get out of the tubes, give them a little bit of alcohol. I mean hard liquor. They don't make it. Either they, even when they get sick, they go back to it. They can puke their guts out, and the next thing they do is take a drink. It's not something that I, uh, well, I never could take it. I couldn't even take the smell of it, let alone think about well, tasting it. My great-grandfather got rich in this country by making a liquor called Schlebovitz, which is a plum brandy. Still made in Serbia. That stuff, you, we used to use that stuff to light fires. <laughs> I'm serious. We'd have poured jars of it, we'd pour it on a fire and light it, and it would go up like a bomb. And they made their own wine in a 50-gallon barrel, which had a tap on it. <laughs> My stupid brother one time put his mouth on the tap and opened it. I've never seen wine come out of so many places in my life. <laughs> it came out of his nose, out of his ears, you name it. I think it even came out of his eyes last time he did that. But when you, when you do that, when you pour wine into a gallon jug, you have to let it sit. And all of the sediment goes to the bottom. And then what you do is siphon off the top, and that is the good wine. The sediment is what, they, what is known as new wine, or grappa. And they would use that to cook with. It would, you know, the only thing you would do was cook with that. But nothing went to waste. It's like Yeshua talks about all the members of the body. Even the ones that seem like they are dishonorable are honorable. Could you imagine not being able to go to the bathroom? You'd last about three days. You'd look like a pumpkin. It would be horrible. It would absolutely be horrible. We need those parts. we got to quit doubting the way, I mean, he formed us perfectly in the womb. He knew what the purpose for our life was, everything. And there are people that will fight their whole life and then at the very end realize what it was about. I'm going to share something that my dad is on dialysis. My mother died three years ago. And man, he fights it. I told him one day I had a Coke and he just exploded on me. And I said, what are you talking about? You used to drink a six pack of Diet Coke every day for 15 years. And you're telling me about it? I said, sounds to me like you're scared. I said, I told you, all you have to do is accept Jesus. Well, that's your belief, and you got yours, and I got mine. Okay. I said, you're gambling with a pretty, pretty heavy stick there, buddy. You don't have the money. He's, he's rich. He now owns 50 pounds of gold because he started buying gold when it was $35 an ounce. Gold's what? Well, $1,400 an ounce now. 
16 ounces in a pound. He's got 50 pounds of it. I can't even do the math. And he's going to leave that to all his kids. Well, my brothers and so my two, my youngest brother and sister are both, my brother is the CEO of the biggest medical center in the Pittsburgh area. And my sister is uh, a big shot with an um, investment firm. You know, they pay for movies and stuff like that. But none of that will do any good. You can have that until there's no more and it won't do any good. I have a friend that I grew up with lives next door to my brother. Made good money because he ran a place where they had concerts. He's a drunk. And my brother said he's about to lose everything and he doesn't even know it. The bank's going to come in and take everything. You see, people never realize it until it has happened. And that's when you have to pray for their soul. Because that, that, that weakest moment is where we find our strength. You can't, you can't do it on your own. No matter how much money you have. Okay? Bill Gates. If he has his way, he'll reduce the world population to 600 million. You don't believe me? Look at the Georgia Guidestones. They don't even know who did those. They have no idea who did those. Yet they have Hebrew and they've got Arabic and they've got every language on earth on them. In Detroit now, they have a, sta a statue of Satan. Right by the courthouse. How's that? And they wonder, yes, exactly right. And they wonder why they can't sell cars there anymore. People just don't want to believe what they've been told. They're all looking for something else, something mystical. Well, there is nothing mystical. The only thing that was mystical was Yeshua. That's it. I mean, when they tried to kill him, what happened? They all got confused. And he just walked away like they were, wasn't even there. They tried to, they tried to kill James. Paul tried to kill James and six other men who met up on a hill in Jerusalem. <clears throat> you can still see it today, or not in Jerusalem, on the way to Damascus. And that's where Paul got struck down and lost his way to the way to Damascus. And he was, people don't realize this, he was struck blind for three years. He had to totally believe on, uh, um, depend on people he couldn't stand for three years. He can restore anything. The Lord can restore anything. If He has folded and bent you, that's because He wants the essence of your soul to go out for others to smell. That's why we go through the things we go through. I know, I've been through it. I never thought at the age of 63 I wouldn't be able to walk on my own. I can't. I need a cart. Probably should have just went and got a grocery cart. Do something to pick stuff up and walk around with it. But I got this little thing. And he wants us to show that injured part of us. He wants us the world to know it's okay to be injured. There's nothing wrong with that. Because it is I that will take away the pain. It is I that will help you. I This right knee, when I stand up and move it, it sounds like a ratchet. You can hear the bone on bone. But a young man from Africa one night prayed for me here, yes. and the pain went away and has not come back. Yes. And I walk bone on bone. They say that you can't do that. Oh, you need, you know, when someone prays and they're carrying the Holy Spirit and it's released, 
It happens. It works. But people don't want to believe that can happen. See, these great movements begin in places like this. The Lord doesn't need a big church. Oh, look what he did to Notre Dame. Do you think that was by accident? All it is now is a front, a facade. He doesn't need help. And we're going to see them all fall. I've been told that the original menorah is in the basement of the Vatican. What's going to happen to that place? I don't have to tell you. It's going to cave in. The Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem is starting to cave in, and they're not telling anybody. Why? Because guess who owns what's below it? Israel. Once it falls in, that's not that's it. In the in the, in the inside of that thing around the top, you know what it says? God has no son. In Arabic. Okay? Muhammad was a horrible human being. He raped innocent children, 12 years old, and said, oh, that's my wife. Would you imagine if he did that today? He'd string him up. Or draw and quarter him. Man, for years, has defied God and thought they could get away with it. And now they're finding out, they're going to find out the hard way, Nothing has changed. <clears throat> not a thing has changed. Nothing new under the sun. That's right. There's nothing new under the sun. Remember that song in the 60s? The Yardbirds did it. Turn, turn, turn. Mm -hmm. That's from Lamentations. Mm -hmm. So much of what we see in our culture comes from here. Because really you can't beat these words. There's no refuting, there's no arguing with these words. You can try to. Or you'll have people expand these words. Like Joseph Smith and the Mormons. No. That's not what he said. He didn't need some goofy kid to go find a couple of gold plates out in the woods somewhere and say, this is the new button. No. There's no need for that. Yeah, that's right. Do not add or subtract. It is what it is. Every word in Hebrew is a sentence. The word Bereshith in the beginning actually means the first prince is tied and covered by the first, the most high. So close you can't tell who's who. And the second thing it says is let there be light, and in Hebrew, the word light is or, which means the first is pinned to the prince. That they're so close you can't tell who's who. Yet people want to question it all the time. You want to get a book to read? Because it was required reading, it was required learning in the first century. It was the Book of Enoch, seventh form. Or Secrets of the Book of Enoch where he talks about the ten levels of heaven. Enoch was the seventh person born from Adam. That book has so many answers. I mean, it talks about how Cain was killed. Cain was killed when Lamech hit him in the head with a rock in the eye, just like David hit Goliath. With a, sling, with a sling, and it went right through the back of his head, blew his head out. And the kid that told Cain, or told uh, Lamech Cain was coming, Lamech killed him because the spirit had gone into the kid. So there was no place for it to go after that. Just like when Yeshua got off the boat at Capernaum. The most powerful words we can know to this day is, and what you can do if anybody comes at you and you don't want to do, you say, Gana at Yeshua ben Elohe. I rebuke you in the name of Yeshua, the Son of the Most High. They told us what name they couldn't take. What happened? It ran into a, a bunch of pigs and they ran in the ocean and drowned. 
His name is the only name in Hebrew that is in the female context. Yeshua is in the female context, it's not in the male context. And that is because he is, in, John, in, in Genesis 3.16, he says, I will put enmity between you, your seed, and my seed. And that's who Yeshua is, he's that enmity. He's that block, he's that way that, no, that the enemy can't get through. Said to Satan about the bones of the Moses. The bones of Moses in Jude Satan. 1. Yes. Yes. First thing he said. And there's nothing that can stop that. I've actually seen, I got called to Coatesville, Pennsylvania once to a church that was in an old Rexall pharmacy. And they were, these, I went in and these women were all screaming. This poor black woman was possessed and they're screaming at her. And I said to the pastor, I said, Are they going to beat her up? And he goes, I don't think so. I hope not. I said, do me a favor. Ask them to leave. They walked away, and I walked over, and I just said, Gana, and Yeshua ben Elohe. And I tapped her on the forehead, and the front glass of that building bowed six inches in and out. I said, it's gone now. Whatever it is, it's gone. Of course, the problem is it finds for the first thing alive, especially in human, and goes into it. And we have to take this stuff seriously because it occurs. Mm -hmm. If it didn't occur, we wouldn't read about it. Where does it occur? Russia, China, godless nations. Russia was a very, very much God-following nation at one time. But they killed off, you know, the king. And who's that guy that did that? They shot him, stabbed him, everything, and he wouldn't die. Oh, Rasputin. Rasputin. That was him. And they did everything to that guy, and he still lived. He was possessed. <coughs> they poisoned him. There wasn't anything they didn't do. Eventually, they burned him to death. They burned him to ashes. for Upper Room Ministry. You can see the rest of this message each Sunday evening, your local time. If you would like to receive our monthly newsletter and know the things the Lord is speaking to Prophet Humphrey, then please send a love offering to help cover our expenses. Also, if you would like to have an anointed prayer cloth and become a ministry partner, send us your picture so we can pray lay hands on you and your need and expect signs wonders and miracles in your life starting today you will never be the same if you would like to schedule a speaking engagement contact our ministry all glory to jesus amen amen <laughs>